Hello everyone and welcome back to our nine month ultimate world cruise adventure. And today we're in Manila, the Philippines, trying out all the different street food they have to offer. And in fact, we try something so legendary, it was featured as a challenge on the amazing race. Welcome to Living Phase Two. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Nancy, and we're empty nesters striving to live life to the fullest. And we're living that full life aboard Royal Caribbean's nine-month ultimate world cruise on Serenade of the Seas. We sure are. Well, friends, we have a great tour today. It's through Viatar. It's a street food tour mm -hmm. called Introduction to Philippine Street Food. Uh -huh. And spoiler alert, we enjoyed it so much. We're going to link it below. So. Mm -hmm. You could enjoy it too the oh, next time you visit Manila. That we said as soon as this day was done, this was one of our favorite tours. I mean, we're certainly top 10. Now, is it going to beat something like a Guazu Falls or going to Antarctica? No, no. But it certainly is top 10 of what we've done on this world cruise so It far. made us feel like we were really in the culture, that we just mm -hmm. just that we were experiencing what mm -hmm. the locals right. here experienced. And so. Chloe, our guide, uh, who happens to be the sister of the person that runs the company, mm -hmm. she was fantastic. Yeah. And you'll see Chloe in some of these clips here. But Chloe, hi. You did a fantastic <laughs> job. And, and we, uh, you really made our trip to Manila very special. Yes, so. you did. Well, our tour didn't start till three o'clock in the afternoon. No, we, we didn't get in, or we, we did get in earlier, um, and we got off the ship earlier, mm -hmm. and we decided to just walk around right. a little bit. So one of the first things we did was we got some local money out, mm -hmm. but and again just a little just a little pro tip yeah. here remember that the best thing to use is to use a your atm card to get money directly out of an atm from sure. a bank the best thing is one that is actually attached to a bank and make sure that the debit card that you're using does not charge you foreign transaction fees. Right, so uh, right. many investment brokerages like Fidelity or some of those will actually have a account that you can link a debit card to. And that's what we use. And so it, it that way we don't, they, in fact, they refund all ATM fees. So we have no foreign transaction fees and no ATM fees and you get the best currency conversion rate. So that's what we did. We, as you right. said, we pulled some money out and just kind of watch that if you're going to do a lot of international traveling. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Good point. Well, we were going to go to the oldest uh, Catholic church here mm -hmm. in the Philippines, St. Augustus. It uh -huh. was within walking distance. Mm -hmm. So we're going to just get in a few extra steps before our before our tour. And uh, just, again, just a, a word of warning here. There are a, a lot of people who are hounding, yeah. I guess is the appropriate yeah. word to say here, That's right. you know, to uh, trying to, to entice you to take their taxi or take their service or, or do whatever. their tour or yeah. And it, it, to me, it felt worse here than any place we've been so far on the world cruise mm -hmm. that it was just person after person. It just kept going for mm -hmm. a long period of yeah. time. The best thing to do and, is just to just give a shake of the head and just keep walking. Yeah. Um, it, they will literally start walking with you. Oh, my car's here. My car's here. Oh, you're walking to my car. It's frustrating. And you just have to understand that that's how they are. Yeah. That's the culture. And to just keep walking. And when they're like, oh, why are you not getting in my car? You're coming with me. And it's like, nope, you just keep, keep walking. Going. Don't let them bully you. Don't let them, you know... I don't make feel, you feel guilty. No, and no I don't never feel, feel threatened th right. or in danger or anything like that. Yeah. But it just gets to be kind of a nuisance after yeah. a while. But, but what I will say is it lasted about two blocks uh, getting off the port and getting out of the cruise ship port. It lasted mm -hmm. about two blocks. And then after that, we were into the more normal neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And, and the, really, we didn't really run into anything too bad with right. that. In fact, walking up to the church, there were many uh, little stalls selling things. And they were, they were selling food. or But not necessarily even just the trinkets I'd say you see at the food I was, or at the cruise ports. There's really things that the locals would buy. Right. And as we're walking by, a lot of them were just waving. And hey, you know, I mean, they weren't. They weren't yelling at you to come to their stall or anything. They were just smiling and they were running their shops. Right. So you know? just just get yourself past the the 
court area and, and you're yeah. fine. We made it to the church and yeah. It, yeah, and and unfortunately it was closed for lunch, um, which, which was too bad because we had been told it was really quite fascinating mm -hmm. inside. They were getting a lot of the floats ready for the Good Friday procession coming up mm -hmm. and because it was Palm Sunday. Yeah. And um, so it was unfortunate that we didn't get to see the yeah. inside of it. Mm -hmm. We were in a courtyard that the outside was rather interesting. Um, and then out around the courtyard, they were selling palms for mm -hmm. palms. It's a, it's it was Palm, Palm Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. But they also had stations set up for Stations of the Cross. And there were people proceeding to each of the stations and doing Station of the Cross for, for Palm Sunday and, and all the way through to obviously Good Friday. There were ice cream vendors there. So yeah. we had a little ice cream. Um, that was our lunch uh, before mm -hmm. the street food tour. And they had three types of ice cream. They had mango avocado and cheese ice cream. <laughs> this is hard ice cream that they put in a little, little tiny sugar scoops, cone. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. so I got the cheese ice cream and I had the avocado. the avocado. Right. And it was a total, I think a, a cone was 80 cents, I think is yeah. what it came to. So yeah. But And that was interesting. Um, the cheese ice cream really tasted uh, like just really a sweet cream uh -huh. ice cream. And the avocado was really mild. It was mm -hmm. uh, quite tasty, but you did, it wasn't overpowering avocado. Um, if, it, if you'd have a very mild green tea ice cream, maybe a little bit like that. But yeah, it was actually very good. Yeah. Uh, one thing to mention why they're selling so much ice cream, it was about 90 degrees. Um, so right it's now warm. it's about one o'clock in the afternoon when we were walking around. Just a pro tip here, when you're going to these types of countries in this area of the world, it's hot, it's humid, Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Yeah. Take precautions. Wear appropriate clothing. Wear sunscreen and keep you know wear mm -hmm. something to protect yourself from the sun. And don't let yourself get dehydrated because it it can get quite warm here. It really can. Mm -hmm. Not, and I don't want to sound too negative to here, friends. But I did find this rather interesting that while we're in the courtyard of the church, that there were security uh, around there and they were using their their, their megaphones. megaphones and warning people of pickpockets. Pockets. Yeah. Of, and actually, we had been warned several times on the ship to by, be by Filipino, you yes, know, uh, to, workers here on the ship, who have really take, some of them become our friends. Yeah, right. So, don't yeah. take anything of value, and you know, keep your normal precautions. Keep your your value, you right. know, your purse or anything in front of you, mm -hmm. and yeah, so right. Normal right. precautions. Don't wear jewelry and that right. kind of stuff, and certainly don't flash your, you know, your um, your valuables around. So just again, take the yeah. normal precautions. But I will tell you. We always take those precautions. We never felt threatened at all. In right. Manila, we, we walked everywhere, and we never felt any danger, anything. It's a right. great, great city to walk around. So, Well, after we went to the the uh, Church of Augusta, then we went to the main cathedral of Manila, mm -hmm. which we thought was very interesting because our ship didn't arrive till after 11 o'clock, between 11 o'clock and noon. So we wanted to go to church for Palm Sunday, but couldn't make it because the times didn't work out. So we actually on YouTube watched the live stream from uh -huh. this cathedral from Manila, and it was in English. The Cardinal gave the mass and it was really interesting nice. to come around the corner and there's the court you know, or the center of the courtyard where everyone just did the mm -hmm. palm procession. Then we went to the cathedral where we literally a few hours before had just watched mass. And so it was kind of was nice neat. to put it yeah. all together. We really wish we could have made it to mass there that uh, for Palm Sunday. But uh, um, unfortunately, this is world cruising, right? The, the ship is going to arrive when the ship arrives. And, and uh, you know, we just didn't have an opportunity to. But the cathedral was quite beautiful. It really was. It mm -hmm. was nice to get to visit that. Yeah. Well, then we caught a grab, which they don't really have Uber or Lyft uh, mm -hmm. here in, in the, the In Asian. Manila, and, and they didn't in Indonesia either, yes. right? Yeah, so, grab is grab mm -hmm. is Uber, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you downloaded that mm -hmm. on your phone, mm -hmm. and uh, we were able to take that to uh, the downtown Starbucks that our tour guide said that this is the location where we were to meet her at. Right, so and, just a little pro tip here for grab. Um, make sure you set your account up first, attach a credit card to it, just like you would Uber, and make sure you do that before you call your first uh, your first grab, mm -hmm. your first car to come, because I thought I had it all set up. We got our grab. He came. Everything was good. 
And then we um, we got to our destination, and he said, "Oh, you're paying cash." And I'm like, "Oh, wait a minute, you know my 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 warning bells go up." I'm like, "Wait a minute, you know I'm using Grab." And he said, "No, but." And he showed me, and I looked at my app and went, oh, he, "I didn't set yeah, the credit card right. up." No, and he no. charged me exactly what Grab said he should, and in fact, down to the two pesos he was giving me change. And I'm like, "Okay, I mean, because it was that's." exactly how it works here so mm -hmm. i went ahead then and set my credit card up for the next one and the next one my credit card worked fine right so it worked out well that we had stopped at an atm first then. yeah because we did have yeah. some some pesos and we will say that american dollars in manila are not really widely accepted you do want to get some pesos mm -hmm. to have there and again it, it worked out fine and things by the way were very affordable we took a 35 minute car ride from the cathedral to downtown we're meeting our tour guide for our food tour and it was ten dollars yeah. total so, um so very very affordable I here and all the say. food was affordable mm -hmm. so this is a great city that can stretch your dollars quite quite long mm -hmm. so well we met chloe we met our guide she was we right did. on time she did a great job also, another pro tip here, we're giving you lots of them on this, as you're starting to go especially into some of the Asian countries to tour, use WhatsApp. WhatsApp has become the almost worldwide standard for communication. That's a good point. And uh, we set that up several days in advance, and Chloe and myself were, were uh, communicating back and forth, just mm -hmm. making sure the tour was set up. Um, we have a tour coming up. When we're recording this today, we have a tour coming up tomorrow in Hong Kong, and Jackie, our tour guide there, has already been WhatsApping me and setting things up. So WhatsApp is really the de facto mm -hmm. standard for communication now around the world. And we use it to communicate with our family as our well. Our family, friends. Hey, friends on, even friends on the ship, uh -huh. um, it's very easy to communicate. With Wi-Fi. Right? Mm -hmm. Yep, send Same. pictures. So WhatsApp, there's a little pro tip for you. Make yep. sure that you get familiar with WhatsApp and set up communication mm -hmm. with your guides in advance. Well, we met Chloe at Starbucks. She was friendly and explained mm -hmm. the whole tour, what was going to go on. And we started off with something really fun. It, it was. So some of their transportation is rather unique here, friends. Mm -hmm. And one of the those unique uh, ways of transportation is what they call a tricycle. It's a motorcycle with like a little sidecar attached to it. And so for Americans, one person fits in a <laughs> tricycle. They say up to four or five Filipinos <laughs> will fit in or on the tricycle. Yeah, right on the back um, behind the driver and all right, kinds of stuff. Right. So, yeah. so we got in the sidecar and they took us to our first destination. Right. And it was only a few pesos. And so some of these <laughs> modes of transportation are extremely affordable. Yes. And so she sent all of us off and she had told the driver where to drop us off. And you can see here, we went on a little. Uh, we thought that was a really little, neat. A little tricycle. Ride. Yeah. Well, friends, we peeled ourselves out of the tricycle and got started with our food tour. And just so you know, we're, we're going to give our descriptions of the food. Um, but for the Filipino names, we're going to put those names down in the description below because I'm sure we would really mispronounce them. Right. And the second thing is the most challenging thing we ate, the one that was featured on The Amazing Race, Stay till the end because we'll show you that one. It, it that was an extra one that she actually normally doesn't do on the food tour. She asks people if they want to try it, and we certainly <laughs> stepped up to that because you know, being the adventurous <laughs> souls yes. we are. So stay till the end, and we'll show you that one on the food tour. But the first one was one of the least challenging that we mm -hmm. had, and she started off very simply, and she said she did that intentionally. Mm -hmm. And we had some nice dumplings, which were really good. They were good. Yeah, they, very yes, good with very a nice flavorful. sauce. And the same place had a. It was kind of a tea juice drink with like jello cubes in it, it that was called of, Gulaman. Yeah, it yeah. reminded me of boba tea. A little bit. A little bit. A, a little, little bit. bit. It's little jello, tiny little jello squares. Right. In, in yeah, the very tea. refreshing mm -hmm. and very, That's very, good. very popular in uh, the Philippines. Uh -huh. And when we finished that, we walked up to a bakery, and the bakery name was Don Benito, Toast. correct? And, yep. Yep, and mm -hmm. she got some uh, cassava cakes, mm -hmm. and she we're saving these cakes until the next, at the end of our next um, stop, because mm -hmm. the next stop is the most challenging. So right. she said it's our reward yeah, after for trying the next all this. Stop. But it was really interesting seeing it's a, again a tiny little shop. It had the ovens in there, uh -huh. and the lady that was in there bakes these cakes right there in her little shop, and she boxed them all up. and And Chloe, our guide, took them in the, mm -hmm. in the boxes and carried them with us as a enticement to try all our new challenging foods. Yes. 
Well, so now we have moved on to what Chloe said was our most challenging stop. We've got about six different things we're going to try here. Mm -hmm. Friends, all together, we probably tried a good 25 different items. So I do have a list here I'm going to be mm -hmm. referencing and, and looking at from time to time so mm -hmm. that I don't miss things. Right. But again, look at the description and you can see the detailed list of all the different foods we tried. Oh, yes. and by the way, for those that have been following on along on our videos and you've been seeing me try some different hot dogs in different places. This is the place where I get to try a Filipino hot dog. You did so, try a Filipino hot that's dog. That's right. So stay tuned for that. We'll see that. Well, the very first thing we tried was called a Walkman, is what they call it. And that was a barbecued pig's ear. Yes. Yeah. And that was little gristly, yeah. um, very fatty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they put a big chunk of fat kind of on the end they of the did. score because after eating it, they like that. They like that savory at the end. Uh -huh. uh, the next, she gave us a little clues and said, your grandparents may have liked this. And in the end, it was pork liver. Yeah. So we tried a skewer of pork liver. <laughs> I had liver. liver as a child and not, not a fan. No. <laughs> yep. All yep. right. The, the next one, we could tell by the um, the shape, the wormy shape of it all. It was yeah. it was a chicken intestine. Yeah. And yeah. It, I mean, not, it didn't taste bad, no, but no. it's not something I would make at home. In fact, I, I think that's probably an interesting time to say that nothing we had tasted bad. No, nothing we had tasted bad. Yeah. It all it, it, more of it is. I think as us as Westerners is more mental yeah. than it is actual the taste, right? It's getting over that that mental mm -hmm. block of wow, I'm eating a chicken intestine, you know. And, right. and but yeah, it's uh, it, it really nothing we had really tasted bad. In fact, the next thing that we had was chicken gizzards, mm -hmm. and we have those our favorite bar back home, mm -hmm. uh, right next to our house. That's their specialty is gizzards. Breads now, them, fries them, and serves them with ranch dressing. Exactly. So how can you go wrong? In fact, we told there. Chloe that and they said that sounds very American. <laughs> you know, they barbecue them here. Yeah. And the only thing here is uh, when we're used to them, a lot of times they'll pressure cook them to get them soft first. Here they were awfully gristly. Yes. I would say. The, the next thing on our list was pig intestines, or as it's called back home, you might call them chitlins. Yeah. Um, you know, very ethnic dish. A lot mm -hmm. of people will eat that in the United States. Not. It Our favorite, a, but it had a gritty texture yeah. to it that was kind of rubbery and gritty. Yeah, that it was more a texture maybe. thing. Taste wasn't bad, but the yeah, kind of that uh -huh. gritty, rubbery. Not again. Gr so glad we tried all these, <laughs> yes. but not something we're going to run back and go. Can't wait to get the pig intestines again, you know. <laughs> and then finally, at this place, I I asked to try the Filipino hot dog, which Chloe yeah. thought was kind of funny. She's like, "Really? Because that's like so plain." And you know? how did you like the hot dog, Mike? You know, it was interesting. It tasted. They serve it on a stick, like many things, and it tastes a lot like kind of a plain bologna almost. Very, very almost kind of just plain, right? That's but it was okay. It was a grilled hot dog on a stick, you know? So I've tried now a Filipino hot dog to go with the Argentinian hot dog and the Chilean hot dog. So now I've got a, a Filipino hot dog on, under my belt. And well, then once we tried all these challenging foods, she gave us our treat. We had the cassava, mm -hmm. which was kind of interesting in that she got two different kinds. One had coconut on it, but the other actually had shredded cheese. They put cheese on a lot of things. Yeah. Cheese ice cream that yeah. I told you about earlier yeah. and now cheese on a cake. And right. But they don't have a big dairy industry and their cheese uh -huh. is kind of one kind. Uh, but yeah, the, the cassava cake was kind of a gelatin, gelatinous cake, mm -hmm. uh, soft, like soft uh, chewy jello, but uh, yeah, the cheese on top was interesting. Not again, not bad, just, just interesting. Different, yeah. yes. But the coconut one I liked a lot. Good. That tasted really good. I like that coconut cassava cake. That one was done really well. We walked down the street to mm -hmm. our next destination. This was probably one of my favorite places mm -hmm. to go That's to. Good. I just liked the food there. Mm -hmm. And one of the first things that we had there was spring rolls mm -hmm. that had various bean sprouts. That and a little bit of pork in it. it. Yeah. It was deep yep. fried. So yeah. Hey, that makes, makes it, good. it good. Yes, it does. <laughs> That's right. Um, and then we had crispy chicken on a stick, but it wasn't exactly chicken <laughs> breast. It was no, chicken it wasn't stomach. Ch stomach, yes. Yeah, fried breaded <laughs> chicken stomach on a stick. And, and if it, try. I mean, tripe, I don't mind. I actually like in Mexico, love tripe tacos, but uh, it, it was okay. A little rubbery, but not too bad. Mm -hmm. And then we had quack quack. That is actually the Fil the Filipino name, mm -hmm. which was fried quail little, eggs. Little tiny quail eggs that they, they bred them. 
Um, and then they, mm -hmm. they deep fry them. Yeah, and that's the orange balls that you mm -hmm. see here. And then you had one of your favorite My things favorite. all day. It was a banana they had wrapped in phyllo uh, dough mm -hmm. and then deep fried that. So mm -hmm. get a lot of deep frying here. Yeah. Uh, but that was quite good. And it was covered in kind of a syrup mm -hmm. sauce. And uh, yeah, that quite actually tasty. was very good. I can only eat about half of it, though, because... This is one thing to note about this particular tour if you decide to to take this tour. Unlike some other food tours that I have experienced, sometimes you get on a food tour and it's like, oh, here's a bite of this and here's a bite of this. And, and you go to like five places and you're like, okay, I had five little bites and that was my food tour and I'm done. Chloe warned us four times before we even showed up through WhatsApp. And she said, come, come hungry, hungry, come hungry. Come. Yes. And she was not kidding. As Nancy mentioned earlier, we tried about 25 different things. And this was not just a bite. This was like full satays. This was like a full banana. In fact, the banana, they cut in half, right? And it was still, you know, a very good portion. Plus. You will not leave this food tour hungry. Right. If you do, I didn't. You're a competitive eater or something. I don't know. <laughs> but right. that was really good. And then the next place we went was a rice cake place. Now, we're not actually going to say the name of right. it. We, we need to <laughs> give a disclaimer right. here that, that we've been told that it was it's a Spanish it's a, curse word. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. Right. Um, so we're just going to leave it. We'll, we'll put it in the description. But it's a it's a famous rice cake place here in Manila. And they were very good. There was different uh, flavors, mm -hmm. some of the root vegetable ones. And again, Chloe, what she did is she got the box of them, got a couple boxes, and then took them, took them with us to our next stop, which was a traditional Filipino street bar. And that was a lot of fun. We went in and we had actually been joking about we'd been trying so much, we would, we'd like to try Filipino beer. And she gives this smile and, and that's where we ended up going. And it's just, they were in playing pool and darts and, and it was just a local place. And there we ordered more food. <laughs> and also at this bar, so this was interesting, it was our first experience in the karaoke yeah. uh, rooms yeah. that they have there. Mm -hmm. They had four rooms just one right after the other mm -hmm. and i don't know exactly how rooms. you go to reserve a room um, you just tell, just the, tell the bartender yeah you do i asked her and it's twenty dollars for three hours uh and you bring your friends in there and it's a private uh karaoke area and so that's very very popular here and uh -huh. as she said they take their karaoke very serious <laughs> yes. in the philippines so it's uh they, that's why they have the no guns or knives allowed in the karaoke room because <laughs> they think it's good. they must go get wild yeah. in those karaoke yeah. rooms but... yeah and so here we had some fried uh, pork, pork and tofu mm -hmm. we also had what they called their version of a jalapeno popper uh -huh. that had some pork uh, stuffed uh, peppers it wasn't a jalapeno no. but it was another hot pepper right right more of a sriracha or you know kind of a um yeah a small filipino chili pepper pep chili, chili pepper, pepper and sort. one had mm -hmm. cheese in it and one had uh, the pork all very very good and mm -hmm. we got to try two local beers the san miguel uh -huh. and the red horse a uh, red horse is more of a fortified beer she calls it their college kid beer um san miguel is their largest you know kind of normal beer both very good though both mm -hmm. very good yeah and we that, enjoyed that then we finished with rice cakes and we did, and so she then brought out, and we had her dessert of the rice cakes. And honestly, we just all sat around and talked as a group and mm -hmm. enjoyed company and do what you do in a bar, right? You just mm -hmm. enjoy everybody's company, and and that was a really was a nice, nice stop. Yep. Well, after the bar, she took us to a bakery, but we really didn't go there for the baked goods. We went there because they had ice cream. They had popsicles, mm -hmm. and so just for a light popsicle, um, a light little dessert, mm -hmm. uh, we had that as an option. They did have cheese popsicles, mm -hmm. which uh, I didn't choose the cheese one this time. Mm -hmm. I chose chocolate. What flavor did you get? I got coconut. Yeah, mm, and it was, was good. really good, was really good. light. It wasn't super heavy, and that was really. But so as we were there at this bakery, Panda uh, de, Pan de, de uh, Manila, Pan de Manila. Yeah, in fact, we we bought a couple of things, and we shared some with our um, waiter and and assistant waiter and our friends at the table. They're both from the Philippines, and so we gave them some. Uh, yeah, and it just really good, different breads made with different uh, flavors, like some mm -hmm. of the root vegetables, like some of the rice cakes were made from. And we enjoyed that a lot, and that was a good way to wrap up our day. Well, yeah. 
We wrapped up the bakery, but as you may realize, the one thing we haven't talked about is that most challenging thing that we ate. But before we tell you, we'd like you to hit that like button if you've enjoyed our Filipino food tour and all the crazy things we ate. And uh, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our nine-month Ultimate World Cruise adventure Thank here. Thank you, friends. Yeah, we do appreciate it. So right before we went to the bar so we took our jeepney ride and then we took that over to the bar um, we got off and she was looking and we tried balut and she did ask us and so those of you that have heard of it what balut is it's where they take an egg that has been fertilized and the chicken has started to grow in the egg and then they cook that egg and so the you've got a partially formed chicken inside the egg and it is a considered a delicacy here in the philippines um, she did offer it as an option and and uh, i said you know what i'll try anything once and so we went we found the balut vendor you can see her here and uh, she has a pile and our guide showed us how to select an egg one the ones to look for and she showed me just how to candle the egg so you know what part has the air gap to open it and then she demonstrated once how to eat it and then she kind of let us loose and let us do it the um the interesting thing is that what you do is once you open the top of the egg there's some juice inside and you drink that first i will tell you flat out it tasted like chicken soup that's exactly what it tasted like, like chicken soup. And then uh, you put some salt and maybe some chili oil on it. And then you eat the rest of the egg, like the yolk and everything. And again, it really tasted kind of like chicken soup and an egg yolk. So uh, I've heard stories that it's, oh, so awful. And it tastes, you know, sour it and rotten. Sounds, and Yeah. It, yeah. It, I know I'm kind of making faces here, friends, yeah. because it sounds horrible horrible but it really um i tasted a little bit of the egg yolk um yeah it tastes like, like a hard, hard boiled egg yolk <laughs> yeah. and it just it just sounds awful yeah but, but it really wasn't as bad as it sounds no no so if you're ever on the amazing race do not fear the balut um, <laughs> yeah. it, you know you certainly can um can get by we and then after i tried it i think it inspired a couple people more from our uh tour to to go ahead and give it a try and then there was one other individual on our tour that ate a whole one like i did and uh, again it was it was one of those things i'm glad i tried it i'm not going to run back to manila and say where's the balut vendor you know <laughs> i can't wait to go have it again but it tasted like a hard boiled egg and chicken soup. So right. yeah, it's um, so yeah. Hopefully that didn't offend anybody too much on our our channel here. But yeah, we're we're on a world cruise and we're here to try as many things as we can That's and to, right. especially That's to get right. into the local culture. In fact, we did ask our guide. I said, Do, you know, is this a common thing? She goes, oh yeah, people will get off work, they'll come and have one or two, stop at the vendor, and then they'll head home. It's kind of a little snack before they start heading home. So. It is a very common thing. It's it is a delicacy considered here in in the Philippines. So if you're in the Philippines, we encourage you to try everything you can. That's right. Well, we're basically at the end of the the Philippines. We're getting ready to go to our next mm -hmm. destination, which is Subic Bay in the Philippines. But mm -hmm. let's finish up here. Would you come back to Manila? I, I would. I would like to be able to explore Manila more. Yeah. Um, we had a great food tour. We got to walk around the town quite a bit. I, I think it seems like a fascinating place. I mean, it's a huge city. Right. And I think the Philippines in general. And little spoiler alert: we we highly enjoyed Subic mm -hmm. Bay too. You'll see that in our next video. So be sure, as Nancy said, hit that subscribe mm -hmm. button so you don't miss it. Um, I think the Philippines has been amazing. The people yeah. have been wonderful, so friendly, and I I've enjoyed the Philippines a lot. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. All yep. right, friends. Well, thank you so much. We know you could be many places on YouTube, and you chose to watch us, and mm -hmm. we appreciate you. So thank you, and have a beautiful day. Yep. See you soon. Bye-bye now.